So, you got yourself a Super Nintendo Classic for Christmas and the cables on the included game pads are just a bit too short. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the 8-Bit Doe 2.4G controller and receiver combo for the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom Classic. What is happening guys, Todd here. 8-Bit Doe recently released the SN30 2.4G wireless controller and receiver combo for the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. They also offer the SF30, which is colored to match the Super Famicom Classic Edition. Both look and work identically other than the button color scheme. These operate off a 2.4 GHz radio rather than Bluetooth. In this video, I'll take a look at the SF30 controller and receiver. In the box, you get the controller, the receiver, a small instruction sheet, and a micro USB cable for charging. Let's take a closer look at the controller. On top of the controller, there's a micro USB port. The supplied cable can be used to charge the controller's built-in battery and to do firmware upgrades. And you can also use it as a wired controller with your computer or Android device. Check the manual for more information on its wired controller ability. There's also a blue stas LED that indicates the connectivity state to the receiver and the other LED will blink red when the battery is low. When charging, that second LED will appear green. Let's take a look at the 8 bit controller compared to an original Super Nintendo Classic controller. Also keep in mind that I have the Super Famicom version of the 8 bit controller and its color scheme is a little more dark gray than the SNES. Holding the two controllers back to back, we can see that they are virtually identical in thickness and besides the color difference, they look identical. Even the screw locations on the back of the controllers are in the exact same spots. Weighing the two controllers, we can see that they are identical at 3 ounces each. Holding the 8-bit Doe 2.4G controller in your hands feels just as high quality as the Nintendo original. It doesn't feel like a cheap knockoff. The directional pad and all the buttons, including the shoulder buttons, feel exactly like an original Nintendo controller. Moving on, the receiver itself is fairly small, measuring less than an inch wide and under 2 inches long. Besides a console connector, the only other thing on it is a small blue stats LED. When the blue stats LED is blinking, that means no controller synced up to it. Press start on the controller and it will auto-sync to the receiver. At this point, the receiver LED will turn solid blue, and the LED on top of the controller will also turn solid blue, indicating it's synced up. I know wireless lag is always a concern, so I shot some high-speed 240 frames per second footage of Contra 3. This footage is from my iPhone, so please forgive the quality difference. The player on the left is a stock wire controller, and the one on the right is the 8-bit Doe 2.4G controller. I did my best to press the jump button on each controller at the exact same time. Yeah, it's low tech, but it's pretty reliable. As you can see from this footage, there is a few milliseconds of response difference. I never really noticed it during gameplay, but it is there. So unless you're a twitchy Mario speedrunner, I don't think it'll impact how you play. Let's talk about gameplay and other features. I've had my 8-bit Doe controller now for about two weeks and had quite a bit of time to hammer on it. I can say with all honesty that in my opinion, it would have been difficult for Nintendo themselves to have shipped a better quality wireless controller. The feel is unmatched with other third-party controller companies. It doesn't feel like a cheap clone of an original controller, nor is it bulky in the least. All the buttons in the D-pad feel ever be as good as original. No weirdly stiff shoulder buttons or mushy directional pads. Basically, 8-Bit Doe has raised their game to the point where they're out Nintendoing Nintendo at their own game. There are a couple other things to note. 8-Bit Doe claims 25 hours of battery life on a full charge. So far, I've played through the last half of Super Castlevania 4, played from start to finish all of Super Metroid, and started playing a couple other games on a single charge. So I'm not sure of the exact battery life, but I'm willing to bet their quoted time is probably accurate. They also mentioned recharges in about an hour. To help maintain battery life, the controller powers itself off after 15 minutes of inactivity. And to power back on, just press the start button. The controller will auto-sync in a split second. Speaking of which, I've never had the controller drop a connection to the receiver. Not once. It stays locked onto the receiver like a bulldog attacking the mailman and never lets up. 8-Bit Doe doesn't mention the range on the controller to the receiver. However, I had no problem using it on the opposite end of my house, which is about 40 feet away. So unless you intend to use it in an amphitheater, I think you'll be fine. Another thoughtful feature is that the controller has a building reset feature. If you press down plus select at the same time on the gamepad, it puts you back out to the game menu just the same as if you press the console reset switch. Another nice feature is that the gamepad powers off when the console is powered off. No need to worry about ever manually powering the gamepad off. This is another nice battery saving feature. So, for your $25 you get a super attractive wireless gamepad with built in rechargeable battery, great filling buttons and d-pad, and a killer battery life. And not to mention it never drops sync with the receiver. So uh, yeah, you should definitely go out and pick one of these up. 
Well guys, that's it for this video. If you're looking for quite possibly the best third party controller for your Super Nintendo or Super Famicom Classic system, look no further. The 8-Bit Doe 2.4G controller and receiver packs a heck of a punch for a mere $25. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and feel free to leave a comment below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.